I feel like my mouth is sunburned and someone just keeps hitting it. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Jeff Kelly from Austin College Athletics. We're here today to eat some ridiculously spicy wings. If you've seen the show Hot Ones, it's a hugely popular show in which people have spicy wings, increasingly spicy through a question and answer period. Uh, we're, bit, you know, we're, we're blatantly ripping that off, but good news, I have permission from the host of Hot Ones, John <laughs> Evans. I've got Twitter proof, Thank and I'm going to post it right up there, right now. I'm here today with head and hens and women's tennis coach, Ryan Dodd. Coach Dodd, how are you with spicy food? I'm a fan of the Hot Wings, but I want to bring your attention to, are you aware of the, uh, the epidemic that's kind of going on in this country. Uh, you know, we, we live in a society where people are just making bad decisions and, and posting the results online. And my presence here today, I just hope that I can be uh, the torchbearer for people, you know, uh, making, making the right decisions. See, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was about to ask you, are you ready to get to a point where you're gonna start slowly starting to question your life decisions that brought you to this point in time? No not but you know I, I am really hungry and I do like hot wings and uh, I'm always looking to challenge myself to see if I'm, I'm, I'm up to the capability of handling some of this stuff. Well we've got six wings here ranging in spiciness from sriracha it's no big deal all the way up to we'll get to it later. <laughs> <sighs> if you're ready I'm ready to start things off sriracha is the first wing Again, Sriracha, it's no big deal. Yes. Let's jump in. Right, had this number of times, so best of luck to you. I do enjoy a good hot wing from time to time. Now, someone could say that Sriracha is kind of like the junior sauce on this level. Speaking of juniors, huh. you've competed at junior level tennis as a player, and now as you move into coaching, what are some of the differences you've good. seen in terms of junior level tennis from a coaching standpoint, playing standpoint, and what would you tell some recruits at that level? Uh, first of all, nice segue. Um, you know, masterfully done. You know, I, I mean, I, I was in, I was even in a different part of the country. I was up in Ohio. I was a junior level tennis player. Um, you know, the, the emphasis on, on playing tournaments is still the same from club level and, and participation in, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, playing at different country clubs and, and playing in clinics and private lessons and all that stuff, but. You know that the, uh, the USTA has, has really made an emphasis on making sure that the kids understand that it's not just who you beat, but it's how often you play tournaments, and they've maximized the uh, you know the participation point scale. Uh, the more tournaments you play, the further you get in tournaments, especially down here in Texas, where you got the you got the challenger level, you got the champ level, you got the super champ level, where you can move on up, and, and college coaches pay attention to that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, the better off that you'll be in terms of getting an opportunity to play college tennis and, and playing in more advanced tournaments and playing against better competition. Uh, let's move on to the second wing, which is Dinosaur Barbecue Wango Tango Sauce. This is not a sauce from Hot Ones, but it's a, it's a sauce that's near and dear to my heart. Wango it's Tango. from Dinosaur Barbecue, which is a famous chain up throughout uh, the Northeast. It started in Syracuse, New York, where I went to college. My, most of my family's from there. Mm -hmm. So. I'm from that area, I'm from Vermont, but I went to Syracuse, my family's from there. Now, speaking of where you come from, yeah. you played tennis at DePaul University, yes, you I played did. on the national stage. Yes. Uh, I, I'm just curious to know though, student athlete Ryan Dodd, yeah. are there any things from those days that you're able to actually tell us that won't get you in too much trouble <laughs> that would surprise your players? And I'm gonna dive into this wing. Well, I, I'll, I'll join you in the wing as well. Uh, start with my next anecdote. Um, you know, I pride myself, and, and my players know this too, it's really good, on having a um, almost an innate sense of effort. Um, you know, when you're out on the tennis court, because tennis can be almost like an endurance sport, especially in college where you're playing doubles and singles. But one of my favorite stories actually has less to do with me and has to do with an experience that, that I was able to participate in, that I was able to see one of my uh, college tennis players who's playing in the semifinals of the national singles tournament. In my freshman year, I made it all the way to the, to the semifinals, you know, final four of, of the, na the nation's best tennis players. 
And I remember he was in he was in a grueling three set match, and uh, ended up he started he started cramping both in his legs and his arms. And uh, most amazing thing I've ever seen, most amazing effort level I've ever seen. He actually played a game with his opposite hand and won a game with his opposite hand. Realized he wasn't going to be able to win the match holding the racket in his opposite hand, and he couldn't grip the racket in his dominant hand. So he took athletic tape and he strapped the racket to his arm so it would stay in place and he actually ended up winning the match, going to the hospital, getting two liters of fluid in his body, coming back two hours later and playing in the semifinals after he won his quarterfinal match. So when I expect my players to go out and give their best effort, that's one of the things that I, I kind of look at when I... Uh, you know, when I when I look at my college experience, you know, the people that I looked up to, the seniors that I looked up to, when they had their last opportunity to play a match, you know, they went and they gave it their all. So the next sauce we've got is tapatio, which is one that they use on hot ones. It's not too bad of a sauce. We're kind of slowly getting up there in the yeah. spiciness scale, but this is one you, you see in every grocery store down here. Uh, it's a it's a great sauce, not too bad, and it tastes. Nice. I, I'll believe you. I'll believe you. Now, I'm not sure you're aware, mm -hmm. but Wimbledon is going on right now. Uh, you're wasn't probably aware. wasn't aware. Yeah, I, I'm here breaking news for you. Sure. And I'm just always curious. How much pro tennis do you watch? How, how much of Wimbledon can you watch? And take away some lessons from what you see the, the very best of the best doing and instill that in your own players. I mean, we're seeing them in competition when they're, when they're out there playing, but obviously I have my favorite players and, and, and I like to watch matches. Um, I don't know. It's the the longer I've been, the longer I've been a coach, the longer I've um, I've worked with players, the more interested I get in watching pro tennis players because I learn little. Like, that's got a little bit of heat to it. Um, it kind of sneaks up on you a little bit. Yeah, it does. It kind of sneaks up. Um, you know, the 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 more I kind of pick up things, and then when I when I watch matches year after year, you know, I. I guess I can I can see the angles of the game a little bit better, and you know I've actually had an affinity for whenever doubles is on. It doesn't get on all that often, but um, I've had an affinity for watching doubles just because that's that's such a huge impact in the college game. If you can get a 3-0 in a best of five match, uh, you know after the first portion of competition, you you really uh, you, you really kind of take the match by storm, and you, and you hold all control going into the singles competition. So I try to take as much as I can, but not a lot, not seeing any practice. All right, now we talked about how this sauce kind of sneaks up on you. Okay. And we're about to transition into Louisiana, Louisiana style. Yeah, that face. Uh, one of these things, sure. exactly. I, I, I picked this bottle, it's one they used on, on Hot One mm -hmm. because that face, I swear I've seen Preston Glasscock make that face on the. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but anyway, going back, speak, speaking of sneaking up on people and your team, yeah. this past year you might have snuck up on some people a little bit. You're not gonna be able to do that this year. Uh -huh. you, both teams finished regionally ranked. Yeah. Uh, you brought in the number 19 women's recruiting class in the nation. Now, how does that change your prep, that, or does it change your preparation going into the season and what you tell the kids as you get ready for the next season when nobody, everybody's gonna expect you now to be one of the top teams in the SEAC. Sneaking up and, and changing our strategy. Well, we change our strategy from year to year because I feel we've improved from year to year. And we start out by um, by changing changing our goals and, and changing you know what our objectives are for this year. But with the number 19 recruiting class coming in, you know what that tells you is there are a lot of people that are new, especially on the women's team with five really competitive and really integral seniors to our success over their last four years departing and five new uh, freshmen coming in, you know, we're really going to have to work on team chemistry. So uh, I was actually watching a SCAC video the other day where we did a, a preseason interview and I was talking about how I went um, a, comp a, a, you know, a resurgence in our competitive identity for our women's tennis team and that is really going to be that much more of a goal for us this year with so many new faces and so many returners. Um, I, I understand that we're not going to be sneaking up on anybody, uh, but that's kind of the cool thing is, you know, we've, we've had what I perceive to be the right recipe 
and we're not sneaking up on anybody anymore because we've been successful in what we've done, I think we'll sneak up on people maybe in the ITA Fall Regionals because we haven't really gone far in the first round. Uh, second round, third round, you know, deep, deep into the front draw, but hopefully that's a, a sign of good things to come. And, and, you know, I put my faith in the players and they do me and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get there. All right, well, hot. We're, we're, we're getting to the point now. This next sauce. Yeah. The bomb beyond insanity. I think and that face be, belongs on that bottle. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I was a little curious about this stuff, about these sauces, because some yeah. of them I had not had before. So yeah. Saturday, I actually got some wings and tested the first four because bottle number six is actually your own personal hot sauce. I, yes, I, I, you know, I, I put it on cream cheese. I've never put it on the wing, so it's probably gonna hurt me a little bit more, but we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, uh, so Saturday, cruising through the first four. Yeah, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was no big deal. I'm feeling a little heat. And then I, uh, I got to this one. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, let's just say that my wife really appreciated watching my pain and suffering and just laughed and laughed and laughed. Which, right. Uh, brings up some other questions and maybe some metaphors for marriage that I don't want to get into <laughs> because I like being married. But I'm just telling you what to expect. It is, it's not lying with, with that name. So with that in mind, uh, we're, we're going to get into that. Is this, is this like the hottest or the second hottest question? Uh, well... Am I gonna am I gonna embarrass we're, myself? We're not gonna embarrass anybody. We're, we're gonna get into just something a little more fun. Ah, oh, got it. Speaking about your team, but I know yeah. you're a Game of Thrones fan. Uh huh. Now, recently, for for my girlfriend who's watching, she'll 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 call you out on that. Recently, I started watching. Now, the houses in Game of Thrones all have house mottos. Uh huh. Targaryen house motto, and this is me nerding out a little bit, is fire and blood, which I think is gonna sum up our reaction to the bomb beyond insanity. Game of Thrones. Got it. I want you to tell me which house model best sums up your programs. Okay. House Baratheon. Ours is the Fury. House Tyrell. Growing strong. House Stark. Winter is coming. Doesn't really fit for Texas. <laughs> house Lannister. Hear me roar. Oh man. Uh, should we should we eat the wing first? Why why ponder it? I, we're gonna do it eventually. I was hoping you would just forget about the no, wing, but we're gonna, no. We're gonna I'm, I'm told you I'm hungry, so I'm just not gonna be licking my fingers. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh. And the thing is, it tastes. Oh, that, it doesn't taste great. It doesn't. Oh. It took me four glasses of milk the other day to get this out of my mouth. I'm just gonna go through it. I'm just gonna go through it. You're a braver man than I am, because I'm. One bite, that's it. Oh gosh. That might be the worst thing I've ever tasted in my in my entire life. I was not looking forward to that. No, oh wow. Ooh. And it stays with you. Yeah, you're not thinking about that. Why do we do this again? Uh, because we're very stupid people. The questions are the most important part of this, right? Or is it the embarrassment? I can't remember what questions were at this point. It's time to settle down for me a little bit. So I think all three of those, or three out of the four, would best fit our team. Or is it, well, one was my, about Fury, is that right? Ours is the Fury. Ours is the Fury. Fury. Well, that can kind of, I'm just going to hold on to this. That, that can kind of be roped into my answer just because we like to be loud for our teammates. We like to have fun and hopefully, you know, we're perceived as being respectful because I coach my players to be respectful, but tennis is a unique sport whereby you have several courts going on at the same time, but not every place has a very large scoreboard so you can see the scores of the other courts. So you want your teammates to know that no matter if they're down or not, they're, the, the rest of the team is always still fighting. They're, they're always still working hard. And you gotta do that through noise. Just, you know, from the feedback that we get uh, from, you know, our conference opponents. But the one thing that I was proudest about that I want to mention is, is that the Austin College men's tennis team, uh, you know, received the, the SCAC Team Sportsmanship Award. And I believe it's inaugural year this year. Um, in a panel of the other, uh, 
student athlete advisory committees, they were voted to be the most sportsman-like of the uh, of the other men's tennis teams in the conference. And wanted to thank the other uh, <coughs> student athlete advisory committees while I'm on camera here for for recognizing us in that way because we're really proud of that. Now this one's this one. What is this? It, okay, so this is mine. I really like it. It was a gift. Um, it was a gift in, in a group of other hot sauces. And, you know, I don't know anything about Scoville until you pitch this idea to me. But it's kind of like a Jamaican jerk feel. But I'll put, like, little drops on um, on a cream cheese bagel. Stick, this one's still just, oh, my gosh. Mmm. Um, but uh, I don't think it's going to be that. I've never had anything like that before. And I'm not as worried about this one, but this is one million Scoville. I mean, this like one is supposedly about 135, 150 thousand. Like you see that? I don't buy for a second. You you see that though? One million Scoville. So anyway, going through this and eating these ridiculously hot sauces, it's we're, we're punishing ourselves. I mean, it's the final one. You personally, yeah, punish yourself with marathons, triathlons, <laughs> anything that ends with thons and lawns, yeah, basically. Sure. So uh, I gotta ask you, what is more grueling? Finishing up a triathlon or eating that ridiculous kind of wing? And let's dive into this so you All can right. really think about it. Yeah, let's wait, are, are we putting a dab on this? Are we do are we doing the are we doing it? I was hoping you wouldn't think of that. Yeah yeah. I'm not no. I'm doing it. I mean it is my hot sauce. So if you never see hot ones the tradition, and this is not the, the sauce they use, they, they use a sauce called uh, uh, Blair's Megadeth sauce with liquid rain. Yeah, Megadeth. Smiling Island sounds a lot better than Megadeth. Oh, oh totally why'd you do much. that, Jeff? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's go. Well, I got the dab. So far, not bad. No, no. I'm just going to cup on it a little bit. Then. Oh, yeah. It tastes good though. Yeah, it, that's the difference. It tastes better than the bomb. Like but after this is over, are you just getting rid of that stuff? That's my question for you. I, I feel like if I try I to get rid of it. six questions. That, that, one's one of those, that one's not as bad as the no, bomb. No, no, I oversold that. And the bottle oversold it too. I don't know if you've ever seen like a Twilight Zone episode or anything. It's like a famous trope. Yeah. Where you try to get rid of something evil and it just keeps coming back. I have a feeling that's what would happen with this hot stuff. I try to throw it away. I try to put it in a, in a, in a crusher. And yeah, it, it's just going to keep coming back. I'll just roll over at 3.48 a.m. and it'll be staring me in the face. From well, you want to keep it in the bottle because if that stuff gets on the ground, like, I'm surprised that this wood didn't catch fire. Not to oversell it, but that's really hot. Like, I'm still feeling that even after this one that's supposedly hotter. That one was fine. I ate the whole way. But the question that you asked, Marathons and triathlons. So those last four hours, plural. And I would say that that has subsided over the span of what? How long has it been? Like five minutes since we ate that wing? All the training that goes into to marathons and triathlons. I mean, I, I don't really train all that hard. I just try to stay in shape, but um, I would say that's that's harder than than eating any of those wings, even though it is still lasting, and I'm probably going to get permanent damage from it. So, I would say the marathons and triathlons are more fun. Let's put it that way. Uh, so we made it through. I'm going to go pick a nice spot to curl up and wait yeah, for a while. Got it. I want you to go ahead and just give your best pitch, Austin College Tennis. We got to start with Austin College first. Uh, great academic opportunity, prides itself on getting you to the next level uh, of both your career and your uh, and your postgraduate education. Um, if you get the opportunity to play a competitive sport while you're in college, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at. That's, um, you know, we're increasing in our competitiveness. We work really hard, but at the same time, our women's tennis team and our men's tennis team are consistently uh, some of the top GPAs in the school. With women's tennis being, oh man, I just got more of it. Um, uh, with women's tennis being the top two, uh, or the in the last two years, the top GPA in the school. So extremely proud of them, extremely proud of our players. Um, exciting times to come 
for Austin College, but you know there's still more work to do, and, and we're not going to stop working. And for all these, all those of you out there, if you're watching this and you're, and you're interested in playing college tennis, um, you know we're a serious program that uh, I, I think you, that that you should be looking at. Um, you know, I, I really think that we we have a family-like atmosphere that, that people should want to be a part of. And I know we're going over 30 seconds, but you know, I could talk forever about this team. And I think that says a lot when the coach just really can't stop talking about how proud he is of the team.